continue eating and enjoying your meal. I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, Reverend Rick Smith. You might know him from NC Works. You might not know him as a reverend. He is a, a very good friend of mine and a man of the cloth and a man of the faith, and I would like to invite him up here. Rick is a lifelong resident of Western North Carolina, and he is a proud dad of three young adults who are out in the world trying to make things happen. Rick, why don't you come up and join us this evening for our invocation. Good evening. As I look around the room, I see friends, I see family, I see co-workers. As Brian had asked me about doing this tonight, the main thing that kept coming to my heart, my mind, and my soul as I was praying about this was community. This represents so much of that. I had two scriptures real quickly that came to mind. 1 Peter 4.10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Hebrews 10.24, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. And as I look around this room, it's amazing the good works that I see that are happening all throughout this room and how God is stirring each of us. Those of us that are my Methodist friends in the room will recognize the words that I'm getting ready to share because they actually come from a, an Anglican priest by the name of John Wesley who shares a common faith with myself. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Why don't we go to the Lord in prayer tonight? Father, I want to thank you for this amazing community that we live in. It is through your grace and your goodness that we have each been led here to serve together. None of us can take any credit for this, Lord. The gifts each of us have and use to serve our community come from a loving, merciful, and gracious God. Thank you for placing each of us here together tonight. This community is our mission field, and you have called each of us to serve. It is my prayer tonight that you will continue to bring the people that we need to help our community grow and prosper. May you give each of us grace and strength to love you first and then to love one another so that our community will continue to grow stronger and grow closer together until every person matters and has helped to achieve their best life. I thank you for my friends at the Caldwell Chamber of Commerce and all the other community leaders here present tonight. I thank you, God, that you have chosen to serve you by serving the citizens of our community and county here. May you continue to rise up leaders among us, God. Have your way in Caldwell County as we come together tonight to celebrate as citizens, leaders, and a community. Please bless this meal and the words that we will share tonight and the fun times when we give you the praise and the honor. And Lord, we just ask that you direct us in all our doings with thy most gracious favor and further us with thy continual help that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in thee. We may glorify thy holy name and finally by thy mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Have a great evening. The last time I had an opportunity to stand here at this podium, I was challenging all the men in the room not to forget that Valentine's Day was coming up because I was giving away an award for Chitola. My, how things change in the course of a year. It's an honor for me to be serving in this capacity, representing your community. Tonight, we celebrate history. We celebrate community. And we celebrate unity. We celebrate 100 years of this community working through this Chamber of Commerce for its success. Please give all of yourselves a round of applause for 100 years of success. We are here tonight to recognize volunteerism in our community, that which makes us stronger. Tonight we provide you with a special visionary award. We will honor an ambassador of the year and we will close out the evening with our 60th annual L.A. Dysert Awards as we honor two amazing individuals in our community for their service. As we mark the 100-year turn and the century turn for the Chamber of Commerce, it is beneficial not to forget the past. 
as this history and heritage will guide our steps as we move forward. We need to embrace every part of our heritage, every part of our history for the last 100 years for us to be successful in the next 100 years. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce Mr. Jordan Barnes. He is the Western Regional Representative for Senator Tom Tillis. Jordan will be providing us with a commemorative letter to help honor and celebrate our 100 years of serving this community. Jordan? Good evening. It's an uh, honor and a pleasure to be here tonight on behalf of my boss, United States Senator Tom Tillis. I've had a great day here in uh, Caldwell County, and I want to thank Brian for giving me the opportunity to come present a letter that the Senator sent me with. And in his letter, he addressed it, Dear friends, I am pleased to extend my greetings to everyone gathered to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Caldwell <laughs> County Chamber of Commerce. This is an exciting occasion for our business community and I'm proud to acknowledge this milestone. I applaud your ongoing mission to foster economic growth and prosperity in the region through advocating on behalf of businesses, improving education opportunities, promoting tourism, and enhancing our community's quality of life. I'm grateful for your commitment to serving Caldwell County, and I look forward to hearing of your continued success. Please feel free to contact my office if I can ever be of assistance to you, and I wish you all the very best for a wonderful celebration. Sincerely, Tom Tillis. And, and I will say shortly that um, this is great timing, that we're able to celebrate the success and, and you all and your dedication to Caldwell County. Um, I always say when our counties are strong, our state is strong. And after seeing the folks today and having the opportunity to visit businesses and manufacturers, I can say the state of Caldwell County is strong and your future is bright and you guys owe yourself a big round of applause. Thank you all and God bless you and safe travels going home tonight. Bye. As I mentioned, please feel free to enjoy your meal. Our servers are coming out in a parade of your meal, so we're thankful for their hard work and dedication in preparing us for this evening tonight. You know, every year we have an opportunity to make change happen in our Chamber of Commerce and our community by the changing of the guard. This year is no different. It is my pleasure to introduce you tonight to a proud Caldwell County native who graduated from South Caldwell High School and from the Caldwell County Career Center, the precursor to which is now the early and the middle college. She attended Caldwell Community College as a dream scholar, all while cutting her professional teeth at the Bank of Granite in their human resources department. She would go on to earn a business management degree from the Charles Snipes School of Business at Lenore Ryan College. After the Great Recession of 2009, she began to work as an employment specialist for the North Carolina Department of Commerce and NC Work Center here in Caldwell County. It is there where she worked with both job seekers and businesses in Caldwell County, helping each find great employment matches. For the past five years, she has worked for the Western Piedmont Council of Governments, where she currently serves as Director of Administrative Services and Human Resources. Ashley and her husband Matt, who is a full-time driver operator for the City of Lenore Fire Department, have chosen Caldwell County as their home with their two sons, Eli and Luke. Please welcome Ashley Bullock, our board chair for 2020. this event but all of our events all year long thank you so much chamber staff let's give them a round of applause <laughs> next I'd like to thank our current serving board 
board. If you are a board member for the chamber, please stand up and be recognized. Come on, I know you're here. Thank you, thank you so much. These guys uh, and the gals uh, are very quick to volunteer and give them their time, uh, even after hours and on weekends. So it's, it's a, a real big labor of love, uh, love, excuse me, that we all undertake when we sign on to be a, a board member. And uh, the staff and I, we certainly couldn't do it without all of their support. We have a wonderful board. A special shout out to current members of our executive committee and um, previously serving members of the executive committee. These people have meant a lot to me personally, uh, supporting me, encouraging me, and. Ben Willis for tricking me into doing this. Uh, but ben, Bill, Jamie, Chase, Kim Edmondson, Carmela, Janet Mayor Winkler, uh, and Michelle Calvert. Just wanted to give you a special shout out and thank you for your support over the last few years. As Brian said, I am Caldwell County, if you can't tell by my accent. Uh, I was just in Atlanta, Georgia yesterday and today, and they're like, where are you from? I'm like, Caldwell County, look it up. Um, but anyway, so I am Caldwell County, born and raised. I live here with my wonderful husband, Matthew, who works for the city of Lenore. We are raising our kids here. They go to Lower Creek Elementary School. I'm a Caldwell County School um, graduate, um, a dream scholar. Thank you for that. Um, and you know, I, I'm just proud, beyond proud, to be a resident of Caldwell County and to represent you as your chamber um, board chair this year. Um, so if there's anything that I can do for you, please let me know. If I don't know you, I promise by year's end, I will try to know you. Um, but I do want to thank all the institutions, all the people, all the businesses that continuously pour out their support and their love to the citizens of Caldwell County because I am because of you. So thank you so much. So last but not least, I'd like to rec uh, recognize Ms. Ann Smith. I think you're somewhere here in the front. Commissioner for um, Town of Hudson who will be um, presenting our Visionary Award for the night. Ms. Ann? I'm glad she gave me her hand. She helped me up there. <laughs> it gets harder every day. The recipient of the award I am presenting tonight the Visionary Leadership Award wasn't born in Caldwell County, but thankfully for us, she got here as soon as she could. She was born in Anson County and moved here in 1971 when she accepted a job to teach in Caldwell County Schools. Over the course of her career in the education system, Dr. Kathy Carroll served as a teacher, assistant principal, principal, cheerleading coach, basketball coach, and mentor to hundreds of students. She wrote many thousands of dollars in grants to support children in the school system, including a grant to help start the middle college. Thank you, that light really helped. <laughs> At Hudson Elementary School, where my son was a student, I saw Kathy early in her career. I saw children who were the recipient of daily hugs and support from Kathy. I saw her wiping tears, hugging a child who had been hurt in some way, making them laugh, and offering encouragement. Both Kathy and her husband Joel were kid magnets, and they remain that way today, even though some of the kids are now adults. You can hardly go anywhere with them without a former student coming up to hug them. In 2009, Kathy, along with a group of individuals she recruited for the project, saw the need to develop a special place where children who had been or were being sexually abused could find a haven. In 2010, a governing board was organized, and through grants written by Kathy and the support of this community, this project became a reality. You know this project by its perfect name, Robin's Nest a place to nurture, love, and support children whose trust has been shattered, who need help in finding their way back to safety. Kathy's vision, her love for children, and her advocate for them have brought Robin's Nest to the nurturing center that it is today. Over the years, Kathy has served as a board member, 
establish and work fundraising events, and continue to write grants as needed. During her years as principal, teacher, and most important, as a mentor to students, Kathy became a significant and intricate part of the lives of the young people in the Burgess Chapel community. Kathy would help many students over the years in the classroom as a mentoring coach, but as one of her former students said, none would have imagined that those bonds of love and respect for each other would stand the test of time and lead to the remarkable demonstration of selfless dedication to Burgess Chapel United Methodist Church, the first and only black church in Granite Falls. Burgess Chapel had been an important part of the Granite Falls community for many years, but as decades passed, members died and others moved away. Finally, the church was closed by the Methodist Church Conference. As the church doors were closed, Kathy and her husband, Joel, experienced a tragic loss with the death of their daughter, Jody in her final days. And in those final days and hours, Jody, who had the heart and love for others like her mother, asked her mother to help their friends at Burgess Chapel that the church would not be lost to the community. Kathy honored Jody's request and she and her husband, Joel, purchased the church building with their own personal funds. Kathy established a foundation to manage the church and serves as an officer of the foundation. After months of work from a dedicated group of individuals organized by Kathy and Joel, the church has reopened its doors to the community, welcoming everyone who will come to feel the presence of faith and love in the beautiful sanctuary. Kathy's current project is the Hub Station Arts and Business Center, formerly Hudson High, some of you probably went to school there, then Hudson Elementary School, where she served as an assistant principal and now chairs a steering committee appointed by the town council. The committee works to raise funds, establish programs, and works with staff and the commissioners to bring new programs to life in a building that is so well loved by this community. The amount of progress made over the past 12 months is truly amazing. The entire campus is once again coming alive with literature, business, art, music, and people of all ages. Kathy is one of those people I consider a but for person. But for Kathy, the Middle College Career Center may not have received the grant to open. But for Kathy, Robin's Nest may not exist. But for Kathy, Burgess Chapel's doors would likely still be closed. But for Kathy, the Hub Project wouldn't be at the point it is today. Kathy, it's my sincere pleasure to present to you, on behalf of your many friends who contributed to this nomination for this award, and the Caldwell County Chamber of Commerce, the 2020 Visionary Award. do our best. If I didn't have a 99 average, my daddy wouldn't know why. 
in high school, in physics. <laughs> physics now. And boy, I did. I did whatever because I couldn't take the look. It was that look that would get you every time, that look of disappointment. Couldn't tolerate it. Um, I think I learned my endurance to say after things until they get done. I think I learned that from the old bull in the pasture on our farm. We had turkey houses across the road from the house, and it was a dirt road, of course. And that bull could hide better than any creature anywhere. You'd look, you'd come out of those chicken houses, and you'd look, and you couldn't find him, so you'd take off running to get over the fence and back to the house. Well, the bull had another idea. <laughs> and he would come out from hiding just as soon as you did. So I had learned to run the big, long race and beat him. Just sail over head first to get out away from him. And I think that's why I can probably do that today, even when people tell me no. I don't like that word. <laughs> do you like the word no? Me either. I don't like it. My daddy was quite a character. He said... He, he said many funny things, but one of the funniest that I remember so well was he said, Kathy, honey, you think people are always glad to see you, don't you? <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> well, again, I think that characteristic has helped me to go out there and try to raise money and raise support for causes that matter. Um, my mama always added to that that I had gifts and I was supposed to use those to, for the glory of God and to help others. And as another one of those, those people, you didn't want the look from her. Mm -mm. No, no, you did what, what she expected you to do. So I think when you combine the two of them and their philosophy, you come up with our pastor just mentioned it. John Wesley's do all the good you can for all the people you can in every way you can. I can't ever remember all of it. But I do remember that our purpose here is to do good. That's why, that's why we exist. And that's what my mom and dad truly believed. And that's what my life's been based on. But tonight's award's about a lot more than me. I look across this room and I see a lot of people who have come to the table with me for things. And it might be Robin's Nest, it might be the, the Career Center, uh, the, it might have been the Early College or that one too, and help to get that one going. It might have been Burgess Chapel. It can be a lot of different causes. Venta, violence is not the answer that's uh, coming out of Granite Falls. So, if you have ever been called by me to come to the table or served with me somehow in any venture, please stand up. I'm going to do it. <laughs> there they are. I forgot Hope Station. I don't think I said that in that last group. Those, you're the reason. I love to dream, but I can't do it alone and nobody in this room can. It requires other people to buy into that vision, whatever it is. So you need to give yourselves a hand. I'm going to. This may be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. If my daughter were here tonight, she'd say, Mama, get that stupid feather out of your hair. <laughs> do you know how silly you look? <laughs> it never stopped me, but that is what she would say. And she also did say, as Ann said, on her, on her deathbed, within 24 hours of dying, she said, get that church back for them, Mama. And we got it. We had to do some finagling, manipulating, and causing people to feel guilty. <laughs> but we got it. 
and it is now Unity Center, and it's used for a lot of things. And if there's anything this world needs more of, it's community and unity. There's no doubt about it, and I hope everything that I do speaks to the importance of that. I'd like to thank a lot of people, many of you in the room, of course. Uh, many friends that I have, I can't name them all, and I don't want to forget anybody. But I have to call one up. Joel, would you come up here with me, please? And will you please behave while you're up here? No promises, right? Carol, you're in charge of his behavior, right? <laughs> There's no way any individual can pull off some amazing things by themselves, can lead people to make important changes, to affect the lives of, of vulnerable peoples every way you can without help. You can't do it. You have to have help. And this man, as big a nuisance as he is, and many of you in the room know exactly what I mean, right, Gail? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he is the best errand runner to Lowe's in the world. If we're doing renovation at the church, this man can drive the truck and pick out the right things at Lowe's that we need. He also is, he says, he claims that I volunteer him every morning what he needs to do. But again, I couldn't have done the things I've done without him. He supports me in every way, and I want to say thank you, Nathan. <laughs> now go sit down and behave. <laughs> Carol, you're back on duty. <laughs> uh, I was a, a, an English teacher for years. Love literature, love writing. I turned that love of writing into grant writing um, and selling of visions, I guess, is the best way to say it. But I love some of the best authors in the world. One of the best is Jan Karen. I hope if y'all don't read her, if you haven't, you, I hope you start reading her because she's awesome. Um, and she approved Dan's remarks tonight, as I understand it. Which is, which is good to know. I knew it was safe when I knew Jan had approved it. One of the um, authors that I want to quote tonight is Garrity. He says, if you're a visionary, whatever you're going to do, go do it. Be bold. Because in your boldness is courage, genius, and magic. So I, I call all of us to remain together this is one big table in here, and let's keep finding the, the courage we need, the boldness we need, and create the magic and the genius that makes Caldwell County what it is. Thank you all. I'm very grateful. We now have an opportunity to recognize a special group of volunteers. The Chamber of Commerce cannot exist without everyone in this room and every part that you play in this big giant car. But we have some great people amongst us that are our ambassadors, that truly embody the word ambassador. They go out and they work with our members, they identify ways that we can improve and they speak the goodwill of the Chamber of Commerce to our community. Each year we have the opportunity to recognize an ambassador of the year in a difficult process that is. I'd like to welcome up last year's ambassador of the year winner, Amber Miles.
commitment to the Caldwell Chamber Ambassadors Program. Ambassadors volunteer their time, act as the greeting arm of the Chamber, encourage member involvement in the Caldwell Chamber of Commerce, and create a productive working relationship in our business sector. This year, the award goes to, drum roll please, Kenzie Trickley. Kenzie, come up here please. to our stage for the next part of our program. Okay, I'd like to uh, recognize both Deborah Ashley Smith and Cindy Day, who have a special part in our program tonight, as they're making their way forward um, to give us a brief 100 years through the decades. Can you believe it? They got 10 minutes to do 100 years through the decades. They can do it at full faith. Uh, but I just want to say a special thank you to Miss Deborah Ashley Smith and, and what she's meant to me uh, professionally and personally through the years. She is one of the mentors in the room who um, really, she doesn't really know it, but um, helped me decide to go into business. I was a uh, sophomore in high school when she came in to speak to my high school class, Miss Debbie Pennell's class at the Career Center. And um, at that point in time, I didn't know if I wanted to be a teacher, go into education or if I wanted to go into business. And I was so inspired by Miss Deborah Ashley that I decided to go into business. So please welcome Miss Deborah Ashley Smith and Cindy Day. Thank you, this has been an adventure. A lot of fun and I want to thank Brian and Libby and Becky and the staff of the chamber for allowing us to be part of this. We cannot hit all the events over the last 100 years so here are some highlights. If you want to investigate further stop by the Caldwell Heritage Museum, the chamber, the library and scope out these and other events. The 1920s. Radio Dam was a concrete gravity dam that began operating in 1925. Other than normal upgrades, minimal changes have occurred since then. Not bad for 100, almost 100 years. Early businesses in Granite included Mackey Furniture and Ed Looper's Ford dealership. Electricity came to Hudson in 1920. All businesses were run by steam before then. The cost was a whopping $1.50. The first paved road was built from Hickory to Hudson, Illinois in 1925. In 1929, the Harbor Furniture and its factory were purchased by two brothers. 
Thomas H. and James Edgar Boyhill. This partnership formed the basis for what became the Boyhill Furniture Corporation. The last building of Davenport College was constructed in 1926 and saw the closing of the college some years later. That building now houses the College Heritage Museum. So as we enter the 1930s, you will remember that we were coming out of the Depression. And so if you will think about Caldwell County rural communities, they were living by uh, candles and oil lamps. There was no electricity beyond the city. But in 1936, a group of farmers from across Caldwell County united forces to apply for assistance through the brand new federal program called the Federal Electrification Program. And they asked for a special consideration to bring power into this community. And just a few years later, for the first time, power flowed and we had electricity to 125 homes, six stores, and two schools. And thus began Blue Ridge Electric Membership Corporation, now Blue Ridge Energies, which is still growing, as you can see when you drive up 321. In 1934, the graduating class of Freedman School consisted of approximately 10 students. Many of these graduates went on to very successful careers and others in the future did as well. 1937 marked the first delivery of, to, of mail to Lenore by an airplane. And around the mid-1930s, members of the John Christian Bernhardt family build a covered entrance to what was then known as The Rock. It was located in northern Caldwell County, and it laid the groundwork for what would become one of North Carolina's first attractions, having millions to have visited The Blowing Rock, which is in Caldwell County, and the creation and the development to the success it is now of the town of Blowing Rock. Then came the 40s. <clears throat> Despite economic fallout from the Great Depression, by 1945, Lenore supported several furniture manufacturing plants, veneer and mirror plants, and several other businesses that supported the furniture industry, as well as hosiery mills and flour mills. In 1948, the town of Hudson voted to purchase a water system. Mr. R. R. Barton Hayes, owner of the Hudson Cotton Mill, made that possible for supplying the water to the town. Bluebell Manufacturing manufactured blue jeans for the U.S. Navy, as well as regulation khaki dress pants and shirts for the U.S. Army. It was one of the few uh, plants that afforded women opportunities to hold jobs in industries other than textiles. Furniture factories did not hire women for production until the 1960s. On 13 April 1940, Wilson Creek engulfed Mortimer with a flood cresting at 94 feet. Two Yala Piper cruisers were the first airplanes to land at what is the now Foothills Regional Aviation Airport on 2 February 1945. During the 1950s, after an investment of $1.25 million, Kawa Memorial Hospital opened a 100-bed inpatient hospital. In 1953, Caldwell County received national attention when approximately 150 cases of polio were diagnosed here in Caldwell County. The combination of efforts between the Caldwell County Health Department and the Caldwell Medical Society made sure that children in Caldwell County received the gamma globulin with the hope that it would control the infection. Medical professionals from throughout the United States came to observe this process. It would be two years before the salt vaccine would be available in this effort. Hudson High School was built in 1955 and later the building became the Hudson Junior High School and it currently serves as the middle school. In the 1950s, the American Legion building was used for banquet seating of up to 600 people, concerts, plays, dances that included famous band leaders like Guy Lombardo and Jimmy Dorsey. And 
I personally remember being there for women's wrestling. <laughs> In the mid-1950s, a loaf of bread was 20 cents, a gallon of gas about 20 cents, a gallon of milk 83 cents, and the minimum wage was one dollar. And imagine this, an average hamburger costs 21 cents. <laughs> May of 1965, the Granite Falls Business and Professional Women's Club was chartered at the Lenore Country Club. Where were you in 1969? Caldwell County and Rokias go to the moon. Material that later went on to be made into an American flag was manufactured at the Burlington Industries Plant No. 2 in the tiny town of Rokias. That flag was almost an afterthought. The industrial strength fabrics woven at the mill also ended up in the heat shields and returning capsules of shuttles. Bluebell began producing the first Wrangler jeans designed by Radio Ben, a designer for cowboy film stars. High Brighton High School was formed in 1966 from Kings Creek, Happy Valley, and Oak Hill High Schools. Friedman High School also consolidated with Lenore High School. A three-story addition was added to the Fairfield Furniture Plant on Harper Avenue. The 1970s marked the landmark Carlheim Hotel's closure and the purchase by First Presbyterian Church for the building to be demolished and to create a brand new senior apartment building that we now know as Quantania. By the 1970s, Royal Hill Furniture, a locally owned and operated business employing thousands, had transformed to be become one of the world's leaders in the furniture industry. The Caldwell Arts Council was established from the efforts of the Lenore Service League, and in 1978, the Broyhill family donated their 1905 home place to be the permanent location for the Lenore Arts Council, and it still remains there today. North Carolina's most beloved minister, Reverend Billy Graham, held a 10-day Crusade for Christ event at Matt Cook Stadium where over 48,000 people came to hear him. In 1977, we saw the closure of Lenore High School and their famous band had appeared in a motion picture performed in the 1936 New York World's Fair and received consecutive top ratings nationally for many, many years. Linda Story, former town, Granite Falls Town Manager, served as the Board of Directors of the Lenore Caldwell County Chamber of Commerce during the 1980s. Caldwell County has been known Worldwide for its annual sculpture event at the J.E. Boy Hill Park. Many of us have been touched by the hospice facilities we have in the county. Catherine Respice Barnes introduced the hospice concept, and in the audience was Dr. <coughs> Jane Carswell. Hospice began in a donated Sunday school room with funds from First, Pre First Presbyterian Lenore and Lenore Service League, one full time employee and volunteer nurses. Dr. Belt joined the board and became a medical, volunteer medical director. Mike Krzyzewski was a guest speaker at the first benefit luncheon. Miss Margaret Harper bequeathed her home, Kirkwood, to First Presbyterian upon her death to be used for Caldwell Hospice as long as it was needed. North Carolina's first freestanding patient care facility was dedicated on 15 January 1989 right here in Lenore. The North Service League raised a large portion of the needed funds for a new shelter home, the Jane Carswell House. Hudson and Granite Falls and Dudley Shoals hosted their festivals, the Butterfly Festival and the Sims Country Barbecue Molasses Festivals, respectively. The 1990 decade was plagued by a sort of seesaw economy in Caldwell County. Nationally, the recession had just ended as the decade began but we saw 15% unemployment rates into 1991. 
Other times we peaked at over 10%, and, but as we approached the end of that decade, we were in full recovery with an employment rate of less than 2%. Caldwell County's manufacturing industry represented over 40% of our economy. And yes, we knew about the need for diversity, it was apparent. But the lack of a readily available for workforce with a unemployment rate of 2% made successful recruitment um, almost an impossibility to make sure that we had a diverse economy. The 1990 census revealed that more than 35% of our adult population, 25 and over, had not achieved a high school diploma. This was a very complicating factor when attempting to recruit new industry. Where can you find fantastic vistas? Ridges over 4,000 feet high, whitewater rapids, trails leading to spectacular waterfalls, and the occasional military flyby. On 18 August 2000, Wilson Creek was designated as a wild and scenic river. 2001 showcased the first Blueberry Festival in Lenore going strong for 19 years. And then Google comes to town. A $1.2 billion facility was built. Since 2009, more than $5.5 million have been awarded to schools and nonprofits. Excel of Pharma Sciences came to town when the unemployment rate in 2008 was about 17.6%. By 2015, it had dropped to 5.6%. Fairfield Furniture expanded plant two cutting and sewing departments. So now, as we conclude our journey through the last decade to bring us to the current, it's not e it was not an easy decade, but it can be measured as successful, I think, by everyone in this room. We ended with an unemployment rate of 3.4%, meaning 36,700 of our Caldwellians were actively engaged in work. We witnessed our citizens, both young and old, embrace the opportunity for education and celebrated record numbers of adults who went back to school to earn their high school diploma. Thank you to Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute because now our rate of adults over 25 is about 20%. We've celebrated with our established businesses who weathered the economic storms and found success. Some of those businesses were MDI and Macquarie Modern and Grand Manor, Fairfield Chaired, who celebrated, um, who celebrated almost 100 years and will celebrate 100 years next year, uh, Bernhardt Furniture, who had a history of more than 125 years, Greer Laboratories, who became Greer Stallergens, Caldwell Memorial Hospital, which became Caldwell UNC, McGee Crating, The Gold Mine, Mackey Furniture of more than 100 years, Belt Department Store, Cedar Rock Country Club and Golf Course, Sawmills Hardware, Gainwell Family Drug, and the Share Center, places throughout our community that found success. We also spent the decade welcoming a lot of new businesses. Luger Metal, Child Forms, Randall Miller Truckley, Trucking, Carolina Prime Pet, Aiken Controls, Roland Umbrellas, Seacon Metals, Baker's Waste, 80 Acres Urban Agriculture, Wood Grain Millwork, Automated Solutions, Carolina Locust, Hospitality Solutions, Summit Install, Harley Packaging, Ryland Door, Carolina Leg Supply, Hoffman Materials, Southern Wood Products, Camp Coffee Roasters, Brentag, and BioNutra. Who would have believed that we had that many people join us in just 10 years? Pretty amazing. Thank you, EDC. And, camp, and County. We continue to enjoy and expand the opportunities for music, arts, entertainment, and cultural events. Many of those introduce visitors to our community who turn into residents. Some of those events take place at this very facility. Now, we want to thank the Caldwell Chamber of Commerce 
for being that thread that held, has held this community and helped hold it together for a hundred years. And what does that mean? It means thanks to all of you because it is all of you who make the Chamber of Commerce exist. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you for your hard work and preparation, ladies. That was fantastic to hear the history of this community. Deborah Ashley Smith, uh, thank you for your work in this organization for so many years. I can't fill your shoes, but I'm definitely going to carry your baton forward. Thank you. Now to the point of the evening we all came for. With the help of Duke Energy and their partnership with the Chamber of Commerce, it's an honor for us to recognize the LA Dice Award winners for this year. I will inject a few items from the committee that spent hours deciding these winners. If you were part of that committee, could you please stand? <laughs> we had a number of nominations. And we're very thankful for their participation. And we're thankful for their hard work and the very tireless process that they put together. With illness, Robin Nicholson was supposed to be here this evening. So we do have a uh, second runner-up, <laughs> Mr. Bill Roberts from Duke Energy, who will get us started in this part of our program. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, I'm certainly no Robin Nicholson, so. <clears throat> so I'm here to talk to you today, or actually deliver part of Robin's speech, uh, to tell you about Duke Energy's commitment to North Carolina and our shared 100-year or in Duke's case, 100 year plus history. We've been providing electric service for more than a century and our roots run deep. We know that our success as a company depends on your success, the success of Caldwell County and the success of all the communities we serve. Duke Energy's history, or Duke Power's history in the Carolinas, began with the Southern Power Company in the early 1900s. And interesting enough, you learn stuff when you do stuff. I did not know this. We were also known as the Western Carolina Power Company in the foothills of the Carolinas. And if you go to Roadhiss Hydro, we'll talk about it in a minute, and look at the plaque there, it actually says Western Carolina Power Company on the plaque there. So. But it was started by three visionaries. Some of the names are familiar. If you worked at Duke Power, such as I, you know all these names. They sort of beat it in your head. But there's uh, Dr. Gil Wiley, James Buchanan Duke, and William State Slee. They founded the company to spur economic revival in the Carolinas. And the first big step for the Southern Power Company was in 1907, when the Katama Hydro Station, not in North Carolina, began providing electricity to Victoria Cotton Mills in Rock Hill, South Carolina, our first customer. Over the next several years, the company's hydroelectric fleet continued to grow, and by 1911, Southern Power Company had built and linked four hydro plants together, the Catawba, Great Falls, Rocky Creek, and 99 Islands facilities, plus two steam plants. However, right, let's talk about this area. The earliest construction of a hydro facility on the upper Catawba region, or in the upper Catawba region, which is above or upstream of Lake Norman, was Lookout Shoals Hydro. Construction began at Lookout Shoals Hydro Station in 1913, and it became operational in 1915. Then we moved further upstream to the first of 13 hydro stations along the Catawba that stretched from above Morganton to Watery, South Carolina, and that was the Bridgewater Project. It started in August of 1916 and was operational by 1919. Bridgewater was named for the Southern Railway Depot that received the materials used to build the original powerhouse. Then in 1923, so now we're less than 100 years, began, began the construction of the Road His Hydro facility. And it was operational in 1925. Uh, there was already, how I many of you knew there was already a dam in Road His? Right? Because the mills were there. It was actually downstream 
of the local textile plants, and it was located there, and it was demolished as a part of this process. And it was also around this time, actually during the construction in 1924, that Southern Power Company changed their name to Duke Power Company. Then the last, <coughs> excuse me, the last of the facilities on the Upper, uh, upper Catawba were created, and that was Lake, or Lake Hickory was built in uh, the hydro station was called Oxford Dam or an Oxford Hydro. Named, the name comes from an early pioneer in that area, who Samuel Oxford, who reportedly had a, uh, I don't know what is this, just call it a crude ferry, that's the way I look it up, uh, that he set up in about 1755 to get people across the Catawba River, mostly when the water was up. So I'm assuming there around Oxford you could get across when the water was down. <clears throat> Oxford was also built, it's the only hydro station on the upper Catawba that has uh, gates in the hydro facility to allow uh, for water movement and flood control. And as I said, it was the last one built until uh, Cowan's Horde was built in 1960 and it formed the uh, Lake Norman. So the reasons for all this, besides to make money, were um, three roles for the operation of the Catawba watery system as determined by the Southern Power Company. Primary role, electric generation. Secondary, flood control, soil conservation, and forest conservation. And thirdly, the provision of recreational opportunities. It's interesting to know that 28%, a little over a fourth, not quite a third, of Duke Energy's generation capacity in the Carolinas depends on water from the Catawba Watery Project. This river system supports three fossil stations, two nuclear stations, 13 hydro stations, and drinking water for 1.5 million people. And it also supports 10 million plus recreational visits every year. But a large part of Duke Energy's history is its spirit and dedication to volunteerism and support of our local communities. The Duke Energy Citizenship and Service Award was established to recognize those who make a difference in their community or place of work by using their time, talents, and compassion to positively impact the lives of others. Recipients of the award help foster a culture of citizenship and service that acts as a catalyst for others to become involved in civic and social activities. Integrity, stewardship, inclusion, teamwork, accountability, and initiative are just a few of the values considered for the Citizenship and Service Award. I would like to ask Dr. Carol Burns to come up and present the first of two L.A. Dicer Awards. Well, this will be Carol presenting Carol. <laughs> and I'm delighted to do so. Um, Carol has been a mirror to buck deal for 50 years. And I'll stop at that buck for just a minute and let that sink in just a little bit. I think as John says, she deserves an award for that. But <laughs> talk to him about that. And they have two wonderful children and four grandchildren. It would take us many hours to discuss all the things that Carol does in the community. So I'm going to just highlight those. She graduated from Greensboro College with a degree in biology, and she worked in a lab in Valdez Hospital. Uh, she went back to school to be a nurse. Uh, she worked for Dr. Hancock for eight years. So, and I'll tell you about, a little bit more about that later. And from that position, she worked for the health department as a home health nurse for 17 years. So she spent 25 years as a nurse. Her service and contributions to the good of this county have moved in all directions. And I wanna highlight some of those. She worked very diligently in uh, years past with the Homemakers Club, and this was to teach the uh, women in the community to improve their skills and their homemaking skills, and she was recognized by the state for that. She helped revive the Caldwell County Farmer's Market. Uh, she's been a champion for Oak Hill School, 
and uh, anybody who attends that school or has attended that school in a number of years can tell you that she was a teacher assistant, a tutor, a proctor. One person described her as the landscaping engineer. Um, she understands that. The supporter of all sports and a major fundraiser. All of those things. She has been an officer and served as president of the Oak Hill Rural Ten Club, and under her leadership and help, uh, they developed the Oak Hill Park. They started a food pantry uh, that takes care of about 40 families. She's helped coordinate numerous community activities, such as the community Thanksgiving service and meals for shut-ins. She's always been very aware of the elderly in the community and currently helps three or four individuals in the community with trips to the doctor, the med getting medicine, getting groceries, and just fellowship in general. She's a strong advocate for the elderly. Some of her most notable work has been through pet partners. And I want to stop a minute before I describe that. How many of you know about pet partners? Okay, Carol, you see, they do know about pet partners. Uh, she was a charter member, serves as a volunteer, and a member of the board of directors, and at any one time, pet partners fostered as many as 50 dogs, and in 2019, they found homes for 200, at least 200 dogs. So she's the 911 for the dog population. Uh, since this is a uh, political time of the year, all kinds of surveys are going on. I decided I would do my own survey, Carol. And I, I wanted to gather some information, but I wanted to see if what I thought would be true is true. I know that the Oak Hill community thinks they own Carol because she lives there. But that is not true because people in Kings Creek and Happy Valley and Collins, Illinois and Gangland, Cages Mountain, the Soul Mills, and Granite Falls all know her. So um, it might be their contact through pet partners. Uh, some of them might remember the days of Dr. Hancock and when she taught them how to take care of their wounds. Just got through talking to somebody about that. Uh, so I, as I said, I decided to do my own survey. And the reason I did that, um, Carol supports two churches. Uh, the United Methodist Church in her community, and she was also a charter member of Waterlife. So as I worked on this presentation, I remember being in the junior department in church, and we kept memorizing scriptures. And I wondered at that time, Carol, while I kept we were memorizing all these scriptures, working in education years later, I understood why. Because children at that age soak it up like a sponge. I wish they had taught me more. But as I went around doing my survey, I have many, many meetings to go to. I would ask them about Carol Deal. So everybody knew Carol Deal. So you need to know that. If I didn't ask a single person that couldn't tell me something about Carol. It was either about the dogs or Dr. Hancock's office or the school. Someone says she taught my child to read. Uh, it was all different kinds of things, so that made me think, went back to my childhood days to the junior department, and we were trying to memorize the scriptures, and my Sunday school teacher said, you can remember these several ways. One is we'll put them into all those things that have to do with love or whatever. Or think about some person who epitomizes that verse. And when you think about that verse, you'll think about that person. Well, I found that to be true because when my minister speaks on one of those verses, I remember somebody in my church because of that. So I started my little unofficial survey, and Carol, I'm just very sorry I didn't record it because it was very precious as I went along. I wanted to see what verses people would tell me characterize Carol Deal. And Carol, there were five of them. The number one one was not what I thought it would be. And I also want to say to the ministers that are in here, I know we've got one, at least Reverend Smith, had another good feeling. The adults in this community do know their scripture. They don't know 
whether it's uh, where it is, they can tell you Old Testament or New Testament, but they do know it. They could spout it to me. The first one that came to me was uh, several people said, well, you know, it says in the Bible, Jesus went about doing good. She goes about doing good all the time. That was wonderful. The next one that was given to me was, uh, well, there's one in the Bible that says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. I said, Carol does that all the time. Everything she does, she does it with all her might. That was pretty good. <coughs> then I had several that was kind of funny. They would say, um, you know it's that scripture they always use when a, a good woman in the church dies. No, what are you talking about? So they give me a few words. It was about the virtuous woman. But they always qualified it. Everybody qualified it and said, sort of. And I'd say, what does that mean? And they'd say, well, you know, she's not afraid to get her hands dirty. She'll do all kinds of junky stuff that has to be done. And that's just not the description that's given in the Bible. <laughs> So that was the third one. You, you should have heard some of the comments. Uh, another group, several, said, well, I like well done thy good and faithful servant. That comes from the parable of the talents. I like that. But the one that more people mentioned to me than any other from all over the county was, inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these, you have done it unto me. I think that recognizes all the work you do with the animals in the county. So that was very touching to me. So I did all of that because I wanted you to know, I wonder what kind of scripture verse that would use to describe you, that you need to think about that just a little bit. I know I'm preaching some, but how wonderful to be recognized by your community and know that you're loved and appreciated and is... Our friend John Thess says about you, you are a worker bee, you are a worker bee, and there just aren't enough days, enough hours in a day to do everything that you wanted or that you want to do. So my verse for you would be, uh, well done, thy good and faithful servant, and I'm proud to share a name with you. Thank you. to live, it offers many opportunities in business, culture, and outdoor activities. There are also many caring volunteer organizations that support the people in this county. I have always been a strong advocate for animals. Twelve years ago, on a cold, snowy, four inches of snow, January night, Someone decided to dump 14 pups on my road where I live. Between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., my husband and I were able to rescue all of them. I got the worst cold I'd ever had. 
this is not in the script, but I want to tell you that my husband surprises me sometimes because he laid down on the road in the snow to try to get these pups. He'd get one in his arms, and I would go get it and put it in the car. And they were so scared, and they were so cold, and they were so hungry. And I told, I came to the car, came back to him. I said, we're going to have to take these pups somewhere. And he said, why? I said, because we got nine pups in the back seat of your car. <laughs> and there's just about no room for any more. But we were able to get all 15 in a safe and a warm place. With the help of Judy Carey, the founder of Pet Partners, we were able to find good and loving homes for the dogs within a year. It was then I, I joined with Pet Partners at the beginning. <coughs> Pet Partners is a nonprofit organization and it's also <coughs> a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Several years ago, the euthanasia rate for the county was over 5,000 animals a year. Today, after networking with animal control and other rescue organizations, the euthanasia rate has decreased to only 36% of the animals taken in. We have made a real difference. Pet Partners is at Tractor Supply every Saturday. It takes many volunteers, and many of them are students. And we are teaching them to be responsible pet owners. One more thing I want you to know. We are on the verge of building a no-kill shelter in Caldwell County. It has already been approved by the about this. It's already been approved by the Department of Agriculture and I invite you to be a part of this venture for our county. So again I want to say thank you to the Chamber and all of you for a great success in building and improving business relationships <laughs> across our county. God is also presents opportunities to serve our fellow man. Let it be our calling. After all, that's what it's all about. Therefore, let's not grow weary in doing good. Let us strive on, for the best is yet to come. Thank you again for choosing me to be your Woman of the Year for 2020. I am greatly humbled and I'm greatly honored to receive this award. Thank you. George was nominated by Kathy and Bill Mitchum for this award. They are related to George, and they reside in Greenville, North Carolina. And both of them are here. Would you please stand and be recognized? Driving all the way up just to support George. <laughs> Bill was one of my players when I first started teaching and coaching when I came to Lenore and Davenport School. He was telling me about all the games we won, and it's because we had guys like him who were doing the play. They wasn't the coaching that did it, for sure. 
George Crowell was born in Wilmington, North Carolina, and his family first moved to Krause, North Carolina. Anybody know where Krause is? <laughs> Lincoln County, sure. And then from Lincoln County, they moved to Lenore. And except for just a couple, of, the, a few years that he was away in college, uh, he's been living in Lenore ever since. George married his high school sweetheart, Helen Withers, and they have two children, son George III and daughter Vail, Kroll, Biddix, four grandchildren and three great-grandchildren. And after graduating from Lenore High School and then going to school at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and I'm not going to applaud for that school. <laughs> George came back to Lenore and joined his dad as a merchant in the store business. George spent 40 years working with his dad, helping hundreds of people to get started in life by offering them credit and also offering them good deals. He still hears, from, according to his comments, he still hears from customers who appreciated the services. George said that they dealt with a lot of good people and he has no idea how many people they helped over the years. A lot of you people in here, some of you in here may have known, or you may have visited the store whenever you first got married and you needed some kind of appliance or whatever for your new home. That's what they did. That's what they did for a living. Early on in the business, George's dad sent George out to try to make some collections. Now this is a good part. <laughs> on one of the early trips, George pulled into a house in the boonies the boonies is way out there where there's nothing. <laughs> as soon as he got out of the car, someone fired a shotgun. George, I've been wanting to ask you this question. I failed to ask you if that was your voluntary retirement from going out and doing the collection. <laughs> it was. George retired in 1989 and said if he had known then what he knows now, he probably wouldn't have retired as soon as he did what he was doing. George has always been civic-minded and served on many boards to serve his community. And I will mention just a few of those organizations because that's what we're all about tonight. Recognizing those people who contribute a lot to their community and to this county. A few organizations that he's been a member of, and I won't repeat all of them because I couldn't take all night to do it. Chamber of Commerce, 30 years. Merchants Association, 30 years. The Board of Directors, the Caldwell Memorial Hospital, Caldwell Community College Foundation Board, Caldwell County Schools Education and Foundation Board, Hospice Board of Directors. George also spent time tutoring and mentoring students in the school system. But one of the things he really enjoyed was going on mission trips with his church, which is the First United Methodist Church of Lenore. And that's really something to do, be proud of. I asked George what he did in his spare time. What are your hobbies? <laughs> he said he used to enjoy playing tennis and doing woodwork. He said he had gotten too old to play the tennis and he's got his fingers too close to the woodworking saw to continue working with a wood saw or woodworking. So he started golf. He said my golf partners and I used to play on Saturday mornings and we would fight over a nickel. <laughs> I don't think I ever met or ever stopped to talk with George that he didn't have a smile on his face. And I have never met a more caring person who is best known by many as a lifelong friend of the people. What a legacy, George Kroll, Jr. George Kroll. <laughs> Wonderful women named Carol. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I don't feel like I'm anywhere near their class. But I did have a good store. 
and just wanted to tell some folks that are here that are never in the store and never had done business with me some of the things that we stood for while we were in business. And my son and everybody's here, grandson, great grandsons, it's good to have them here. <laughs> oh, let's see. You know, when they told me that I was going to be a uh, Dice Leonard, I was surprised, humbled, excited, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to think about it. But I thought, well, this award's not for you, George. <laughs> it's for the people that traded with you. It's for my daddy. It's for Helen and Val and Tim and everybody. <laughs> Everybody that's here tonight, Georgie, Michelle, all my people are here, and Bill and Kathy, thank you for doing that. At first, when I started hearing some of this tonight, I thought, well, they're trying to get somebody that was here when Blue Ridge Electric started, or one of the, the families here. And they, the truth, when Blue Ridge came, I was here. <laughs> but I didn't quite make it to the Chamber of Commerce, so I was just... 10 years old, after, after their 100th anniversary, 10 years old. But uh, this, this award, like I say, is for the people that have come along before me. Uh, we have a lot of good employees at our store. And to tell you the truth, we treated them like family and felt like they were a family. We took care of them and with anything that they needed, we would try to help them with and look after them. But it was that kind of thing. It was a family thing. And they knew what kind of uh, service we expected these people to give to our customers when they came in. And then you start talking about the customers. They were our family too. <laughs> but we enjoyed them and kept up with them. Knew about their birthdays, knew about weddings, knew about uh, advancements that they had or new stuff that they had and it was always fun and still to the day we have the, I have that feeling about those folks it's, it's a wonderful feeling to be that close to so many people and talking about the employees being uh, like family we had three sets of three brothers that worked for us at one time. <laughs> so that was a pretty good family to start with. Um, this. Okay, I'll tell you a little bit about credit. You know, most people today don't know about credit, but back then in the late 40s and early 50s, you had to have a credit reference to even buy anything. If you wanted to buy a house or open an account with somebody you had to have some kind of credit. And how can you get credit if you can't get credit? <laughs> but anyway, when, when uh, somebody in the family came to us and said, George says, my brother needs a set of tires. How about you open an account with him? Well, that was our reference, <laughs> and we were glad to have it. And same way with even friends of people would come in and, and want to, uh, to have a credit for one of their friends. He needed a lawnmower or needed a refrigerator or something. But we kind of got away with the credit thing, and that's different from what it is today. But we were known as a good credit store and looked after the people and let them pay what they could a week and whatever they needed they could have. Uh, customers come up to me, yeah and talk about buying things from me and Georgie. And uh, gosh, this guy came the other day and he, he said, George, I've still got that uh, simplicity tiller, tiller that I bought from you. And I thought, my gosh, that tiller's 50 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it makes you feel good to have somebody to come up and say that or talk about having their first credit this one guy not too long ago said, George, I bought my first bicycle from you and you let me have it on credit. And I came in off of my paper route and paid you a dollar a week till I got that bicycle paid for. But anyway, that's about all I'm going to say other than uh, 
talking about John Wesley and the women, the people, Carol, Carol, and Carol, has talked about all the good things that all these uh, different things do, the foundations for the hospital, the foundations for the school and the county, uh, hospice, uh, Robin's thing, pet partners, heard about that tonight. But that's what we need to say is our goals in life. Let's do the best we can for the most people we can as often as we can. We thank you for the award. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much. evening. Thank you, George. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Kathy Carol. Thank you, Kinsey, for all of your work and so many others. We have a neat uh, monitor downstairs with all of the past LA Dicer Award winners. And I know we don't have the privilege, privilege of having them all here this evening, but if you are a past LA Dicer Award winner, would you please stand up so we can congratulate you for helping us get to where we're at today. You know, we can't pull off events like this without great sponsors, and we're thankful for Duke Energy and Duke Power for their tireless help for this Citizenship Award and the LA Dicer Award. We do have another partner in the room, um, and it's Google. And Google has stepped forward to be a sponsor and presenter of our evening tonight to help us offset the things that we need to do to help serve you in our community. And we have a little video we'd like to show you from Google celebrating their uh, efforts in North Carolina. But you will see in this video, most of those efforts were in Caldwell County. So let's uh, roll that video. North Carolina continued their long and productive relationship in 2019 with support for communities across the state. We started 2019 off with a twang when Google celebrated the life and legacy of North Carolina's favorite son, bluegrass pioneer Earl Scruggs, with an interactive Google Doodle. Later, Shreya Halder, a 12th grader from the early college at Guilford and Greensboro, represented North Carolina in the annual Doodle for Google competition celebrating women in STEM. Speaking of STEM, Google continued its support of students across the state at all levels of their education. The ninth annual North Carolina Gravity Games, hosted by Google, Appalachian State University, and the North Carolina Science Festival, brought together dozens of young teams from around the state to design, build, and race gravity-powered cars. Thousands attended the STEM competition and Science Expo. Google hosts all of this in Lenore, the site of its Caldwell County Data Center. 2020 will bring the 10th anniversary of the Games, with lots of surprises in store. Google Teams also participated in the North Carolina Business Committee for Education annual meeting. This year, the event took place at Moore Square Magnet Middle School in Raleigh, where we walked students through a coding exercise to build and program their own intelligent speaker. Members of our Chapel Hill Engineering Office and the Lenore Data Center team continued their relationship with NC Central University by teaching students through Google's Computer Science Summer Institute at historically black colleges. Local Googlers are continuing their commitment to coding and see us visiting professors at NCCU and at NCA&T as part of our Google in Residence program. Google partnered with exceptional North Carolina organizations to continue training for our state's workforce and entrepreneurs. In Caldwell County, we launched the Caldwell Leadership Series in partnership with the Caldwell County Chamber of Commerce, where we featured leaders in topics ranging from education to economic development. The series was comprised of four events throughout Caldwell County. We continued our partnership with the American Underground in Durham and co-hosted the annual Black Founders Exchange, which brought together startup founders of color for a week-long program designed to help them grow their businesses. Elsewhere in the Triangle, Google's Lyland Hester spoke at the annual North Carolina Black Summit, which brings together business leaders from around the state. Statewide, Grow with Google launched new tools to help military spouses find remote work and start new businesses. Google also continued its tradition of giving both time and treasure to our North Carolina neighbors. Google teams from across the state came together to support families at the Ronald McDonald House of Chapel Hill. 
In addition to sprucing up the building and grounds, they decked out the house's video game room to help these families feel a little more at home and comfortable. Since 2008, Google has distributed more than $5.5 million in grants and charitable giving in North Carolina. This year, local grantees included Caldwell County Schools, Education Foundation of Caldwell County, Caldwell Community College and Technical Institute, and the Lenore Housing Authority. Every year in Caldwell County, as part of the North Carolina Business Committee for Education's Students at Work initiative, Googlers partner with the communities and schools to teach and train youth how to build Raspberry Pi computers from the ground up. This fun-filled learning activity is an all-day adventure for middle schoolers from across Caldwell County. The total surprise at the end of the day is that these students get to take home a fully functional computer, monitor, keyboard, and mouse that they built themselves. This year, Googlers made upgrades to the MLK Center's computer lab, which was a gift from Google a few years ago. Googlers lead coding workshops for the many young who visit the center. Googlers continue to help bridge the digital divide through an innovative partnership with the Caldwell County Library. This new program allows members of the community to take home Wi-Fi hotspots at no cost, opening up new worlds of opportunity. And opportunity is the perfect note on which to end our 2019 roundup. Because at Google, we see worlds of opportunity ahead. Please join me as I introduce Christopher Chesney to the stage. Christopher. All right, let's give Brian and his team a round of applause. Has not has not been a wonderful night. So I'm not George. I'm not Chris Williams. I'm the other Chris. So uh, we are super thrilled and excited to be here in Caldwell County. Um, this is our home. As you can see on the video, all of the wonderful things that we're doing spark and spin off here in Caldwell County. It's important that we not only have the data center here, but we give back to the community. Students at work, Gravity Games, all of those initiatives that we do, they're based out of Caldwell County. The majority of our grants and our fundings are actually left in Caldwell County, and that's an amazing thing. Google is big, super big, but we are proud to say that our data center is here in Caldwell County. So I think that deserves a round of applause. And as we close out tonight, last year we gave you a super cool tech gift. This year we have some goodies for you as well. So if you have an Amazon Fire Stick at home, throw it away. <laughs> Seriously, throw it away. <laughs> but we are giving out tonight, do we have one? Sorry. I don't know if we need a drum roll, but. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so, you know, we talk, we talk about like the importance of technology, the importance of giving back, but this is a little tool called Chromecast. Who has a Chromecast already? So you know how cool it is, right? You're supposed to like cheer. Like. <laughs> so every one of you tonight for coming, for being a partner of the chamber and all the work we do, you get a Chromecast. So what this does is you can hook this back into the back of your TV, in the back of the HDMI, and you can actually stream YouTube, movies from Netflix, Hulu, H Hulu, not Hulu, Hulu doesn't exist. <laughs> HBO Now, Showtime, Spotify, CBS, and Google Photos, even like ESPN Sports. And you get to go home with one of these tonight because we were... So every year we want to give you something. So by the end of like 2025, your house will be totally Googled out. Okay? Uh, so on behalf of all of us at Google, thank you for being our partner. We are here for years and years to come. We look forward to the great things we can do, to, to, we can do together. And thank you, Brian, for having us. Thank you, Christopher. If I could get our board members uh, to go over to that table with Ashley, they'll help hand out these Chromecasts to you so you don't have to all rush to that corner of the room. Who in this room participated in the survey for our chamber trip? We had a very huge participation of a group of people that were interested in our annual trip. Well, 
Drum roll, please. You have voted on Ireland. We will have a group of folks leaving to go to Ireland on a trip on November 4th. So we'll have an information meeting scheduled for that very shortly. And uh, that'll be coming up in the next about, I think about 12 days. We'll have that information meeting at the Chamber of Commerce. We'll have more information sent out to you regarding the Chamber trip for 2020. You know, it wouldn't be an annual dinner without a few prizes and awards. And last year I was that guy that got to stand up here and represent Chitola Resort. Uh, if I could get uh, PJ Wachanski, uh, the guy that tried to fill my shoes at Chitola, but they were a little bit large. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, PJ has uh, become a good friend of mine, and he is uh, a North Carolina native and moved back here. And we're glad to have him here. PJ's got a great Chitola presentation for you, and um, we're going to pick a winner for tonight. Thank you, Brian. I definitely appreciate uh, everything that him and his team have done tonight to make this happen. And of course, for him coming here, it means I got a job. So I appreciate him for that too. Um, but, um, you know, we're just happy to be a part of Caldwell County. We're so close. We're just up the mountain. We'd love for folks to come up and see us. We're open to the public. We've got an awesome spa. We've got a place to stay, a restaurant. We've got a brand new sporting reserve if anybody wants to go down and shoot rifles or come down and shoot pistols. We have that up there. Kids camp, swimming pool, everything you can think of. Just come up and enjoy the mountains. Um, but I am excited to be a part of the Cabo Chamber now. I'm happy to call Brian my friend and got to meet a few folks here tonight, which we definitely appreciate. Um, and Everybody so so we have a nice bottle of wine here, Gabbiano Chianti Classico. State men's basketball tickets for South Alabama. It's coming up this Thursday, February 20th at 7 o'clock. And we've got four tickets, so I better become friends with Jerry Setzer. <laughs> Jerry! All right. I'm not sure who everybody is. I see somebody walking towards me. I assume that's Jerry. <laughs> for, for those who are into appreciating fine woodworking, I know myself I am. This is really nice. Uh, from Jim Johnson and Jay Borbs. And we've got Bill Parrish. This seriously is really nice. So nice work. And of course, I'm very excited to give this one away. This is a two-night stay up at Chitola in Blowing Rock. Breakfast included. We are excited to give this away to Tyler Reese. Oh my God, that's great! It's so fast. Oh. All right, this is the real Tyler, everybody. Yep. All right, good. Start giving away whoever's the quickest one up here. Is. Thank you, PJ. As we uh, close out our evening tonight, it's just really great to be here, and I just can't thank enough of our board and all of our members 
and my staff, if you guys could stand up real quick. Um, they've worked tirelessly putting this event together. Uh, we're really thankful for what they've done. We're thankful for so many sponsors of the Chamber of Commerce this past year and for this evening as well. Please give the culinary and catering team and the service staff a round of applause in the back of the room. Events like this can't be pulled off without your great hard work, and we really appreciate it. So, without any further ado, 17 minutes over my anticipated schedule. I will blame it on... Oh, me, yeah. I hope you have a wonderful evening, drive safe, and we look forward to seeing you at the next Chamber event. Have a great evening.